Welcome to uh, Mathematics with Ams. Today's video is based on the rules of differentiation. So of course we're still busy with calculus. Don't forget to give me a huge like and don't forget to subscribe. Right, the rules of differentiation. You will probably agree that the method of finding gradients from first principles is quite tedious especially if the functions are complicated. We will now investigate other rules for finding gradients. They are called the rules of differentiation and are much easier to use. In an examination, you will only be required to determine the gradient of one simple function by using first principles. Otherwise, the rules of differentiation are used in all other situations. So let's look at the table below. The gradients of number of functions that have been recorded, you can use first principles to verify the gradients of a few of them. If you look at the first one, x to the power 2, the derivative will be 2x. x cubed will be 3x squared, x to the power 4 will be 4x cubed, x to the power 5 will be 5x to the power 4, x to the power 6 is 6x to the power 4, and so forth. So what do you notice? If you look at the bottom one, k to the times x to the power n, then so what you do is you multiply n with k and you subtract 1 from n. So that is the general rule. Of course, the derivative of a variable x is 1, 2x will be 2, 3x will be 3, 5x will be 5, kx will be k, and of course, the derivative of k is 0. So these rules are very important. Make sure that you are familiar with them. Okay, let's look at the following discussion. So what can you conclude in general about the derivative of a function? So if you look at the example, the f of x equals to kx to the power n, the, and the f of x is k to the power a, is kx, and the f of x is k, where k is a constant. Then if you look at the solution, so if you look at k x to the power n, then it becomes k n x to the power n minus 1. This is called the power rule. Then the next one, the k of x, where k is a constant, so the derivative of a constant remains the constant. Then the next one, y equals to k x, is a linear function, so the function and the coefficient of x is the gradient. Then the next one, the, uh, f of x is k, then the derivative of k will be 0, and of course, y equals to k, the horizontal line where the gradient is 0. Let's look at the first example. The following rules of differentiation are applicable for determining the gradient of a function given that the value of k is a constant. You look at rule 1 then, so therefore the rules are very clear. You multiply the exponent n with k and simultaneously subtract 1 from n. Look at the example. If the f of x is x8, x to the power 3, then the derivative will be 3 times 8, which is 24, and 3 minus 1 is 2. The same with the rule 2, k of x, so therefore the derivative of k to the power x, kx is therefore only k. 9x will be 9, and of course the third rule derivative of 9 is 0. Exponent and thirds definitions which are required for doing differentiation. Before discussing the example that follow, it is critical that you go over the exponent and thirds laws from grade 10 11, because the following definitions will also prove helpful to you in the section of calculus. So if you, have, if you look at a there, x to the power n over a, then you need to rewrite it as 1 over a x to the power n. So the coefficient will be 1 over a. You have to do it. The same with b. If it's a over x to the power n, then x to the power n must be transformed to the numerator, then n becomes a negative 1. c, a over b, x to the power n, then a over b is the coefficient, and x goes up and becomes x to the power negative 1. If you look at d, here you have a, a, a exponent b x to the power n, so if you take it up, it becomes the power negative n. 
the same with number E. If you have a third, then please get rid of the third, and you know what happens. It is a fractional exponent, m over n, becomes negative. And f, if we have another third, then you can split the two thirds. So there are symbols which are used to represent gradient. We will now discuss some basic examples to illustrate the rules of differentiation, as well as the different symbols used. The following symbols all mean the same thing. Gradient, derivative, slope, rate of change. And we use a different uh, ways of doing it. You can either say f prime x, dy dx, or you can say dx. Right, so let's look at a few examples. Look at a, if, if it's f prime x, and the function is 3x to the power 6, then if you differentiate, then 3x plus 6 becomes then 6 times 3, which is 18, and then of course 6 minus 1, which is 5. So therefore, 18x to the power of 5. Now, take note the, the notation, we use the f of x because it is a function. But if you look at the next one where we say dy dx, then you'll notice y equals to 3x to the power 6 is an equation. And therefore, we use the notation dy dx. If you look at the third one, we have dx outside the square bracket. That means it's, it's an expression. So therefore, we use dx. But for all three, the answers are exactly the same. The same for b. Look at b. Same for c. And the same for d. So therefore, the notations will differ depending whether you're dealing with a function, an equation, or an expression. Okay, if you look at E, then we have a fraction x cubed over 3. So now we know we need to change that because derivatives don't tolerate fractions. So therefore, the coefficient will become 1 third x to the power 3. And therefore, 3 times a third is 1. And of course, 3 minus 1 is 2, so therefore the answer is x squared. So let's look at f. In f, we also have 3 over 2 x to the power 4. Again, we can't tolerate that. So the coefficient is 3 over 2, and x to the power 4 must go up to the numerator and becomes x to the power negative 4. So therefore, negative 4 times 3 over 2 is negative 6. And of course, negative 4 and negative 1 is negative 5. So don't forget. So it, of course, the same for the other two. Right, we look at the uh, example g. We have pi over 2, t to the power of 8. Of course, t is a variable. So pi over 2 is the coefficient. So therefore, it is 8 times pi over 2, which of course is 4. Or you can just say pi over 2. And of course, pi over 2 times 7. If you can use your calculator here, and you'll get that answer. Look at the next one, h, t squared plus x. But remember, x is the variable, so therefore t will serve as a constant. Therefore, the derivative of t squared is 0, and of course, the other one will be 1. And look at i. If you have a third, get rid of the third by writing it as x to the power of a half. Then a half times 1 is a half, and a half minus 1 is negative a half. The next example, the f of x equals to x to the power 4 plus 6x plus 7, and you must find the derivative of 2, or rather f prime 2. So therefore, you must first differentiate. So x to the power 4 becomes 4x cubed, 6x becomes 6, and 7 becomes 0, and then we substitute the 2 into x, and we get the answer 38. Look at the next one p x squared plus p squared plus 1 over x squared, then you know you first need to change that. So 1 over x squared becomes x to the power negative 2. Do your differentiation first, and then substitute x with 2. So beware of the placement of the equal sign and the use of symbols in the previous examples. So very important, remember the following points when differentiating, make sure that you first remove any brackets, any division lines, any root or third signs. Always get the terms in, in the form which allows you to apply the rules of differentiation to each. Very important. So look at ex example A there. 
if you have brackets, then first get rid of the brackets before you differentiate. Right, so in conclusion, have a look at this exercise and I will advise you to work through all the examples so that you can get used to using the derivative rules. So don't forget to give me a huge like and don't forget to subscribe.